Hello, everyone. This is Manny. Welcome to watching another episode of Nerd Caliber. I'm here with Molly Zeff, and we're here to talk about Wing It. And we're going to look into about the origins of the game, origins of the company that she, that she and her partner, John, put together. And, um, yeah, tell, tell us, uh, give us a general idea. What, what is this game about? Sure. Thanks so much for asking and for having us here. Really excited to be here. So Wing It is basically an improv storytelling game. And it's also in the, you know, broader genre of party game. Basically, the way it works is that a judge will read aloud a situation every round to the other players. And then the players all have five resources and they have to get out of a ridiculous situation using their five random funny resources. So I'm happy to give you an example if you'd like. Yeah, please, please. Yeah, sure. And this is Wing It, by the way, and this is the expansion, which is a standalone sci-fi theme expansion. So... A judge will, for example, read a lot of situation like this. <clears throat> Adorable black lab puppies have hijacked the American government by using their irresistible cuteness to compel politicians to yield to their endless demands. For example, more chicken flavored treats. You are the head of the CIA and from your bunker, you are formulating a plan to liberate the nation from these mischievous puppies. So that's a situation the judge will read aloud. And then everybody will have a hand of five resources and we'll need to use three of them to resolve that situation. So for example, you might have in your hand lyrics to the greatest love songs of the 1990s, a snobby orangutan, <clears throat> two and a half cups of a child's salty tears, stones from Stonehenge, and a magic flying dish towel. And, you know, there are some normal ones in there, too, but you can see they get pretty crazy. And then you just tell your story. How are you going to wing it to get out of that situation that I read? Where, where did the idea of this come from? So, basically, the game originally grew out of this idea I had when I was about 26 years old, back in 2010, that I needed to either write a book or invent something to pay for grad school. So I started writing a book on how to fail well, realized I hadn't failed enough, and decided to put that to the side, so failed at writing that. But then I thought of creating a board game, basically, and you know, selling a million copies, partly because I just love board games, and partly because I was really inspired by the book Would You Rather. Are you familiar with the book or the game Would You yes, Rather? Yes, yes. Great. So I grew up with that, and for folks who aren't familiar with it, pretty simple. You know, you just heard about winging it. The way that Would You Rather worked is similar. So you'll get a crazy question and you have to say what you'd rather do. So for example, would you rather have a ketchup dispensing, ketchup dispensing navel or a nose sharpening nostril? <laughs> and there's, you know, probably hundreds of these ridiculous, goofy questions. And I thought to myself, you know, as we're reflecting back on that book from, uh, from a high school graduation present, in fact, I thought to myself, someone was paid to come up with that. You know, adults are just sitting around all day generating weird questions and being paid to be weird. And I thought I could be paid to be weird too. So why don't I come up with a crazy, ridiculous game, getting out of funny situations. And that's where the resources came in. You know, you get supplied with resources to get out of them. And that was the summer of 2010. And well, basically what happened is I called my childhood friend, John Cannon. He is one of the quirkiest, smartest people I know. Also, you know, a very fun person I grew up with playing games in high school. And he was someone I thought of as a partner. So I call him up. We think we hadn't seen each other since he moved to Boston. And I said, John, do you want to invent a game with me? He basically said, sure. So we started inventing a game together and spent some years on it, about three and a half years or so. Uh, from the time we started to, to actually playtesting was, was about four years. And we began playtesting. And uh, by the time I got to business school, we were starting to turn it into a business. So I can't say that it paid for business school, but it really was helped along by the process of being in business school. So when you decided, like, okay, I'm <clears> going to make this into my uh, my livelihood, <clears throat> my I want to make this into my business, well, what were the first steps that you have to do? Like, what? how does one create a, a company for card games? Ah, okay. Well, in the beginning, you know, we, we just needed to get that product out there initially. So we began market testing it. We did a lot of play testing with different groups. And then during business school, you know, I learned a bit more about marketing in general. I started researching Kickstarters and doing interviews with people. Uh, one in person in particular has been a great mentor from the beginning, and that would be our friend Paul Bender, who's the CEO of Greater Than Games. People might know him as the one of the designers of Sentinels of the Multiverse. Mm. 
and that game company has been quite successful. So Paul coached us early on on the Kickstarter, and we basically, you know, started with planning a Kickstarter in depth. I didn't do that till about a year after, a little over a year after business school ended. And then in terms of founding a company, you know, we just reached out to entrepreneurial friends. We learned how to incorporate. You actually can use incorporate.com, so that was pretty simple. We started making the website actually during, uh, while well, I was still in business school, we found a graphic designer, you know, and so on. And, you know, we learned over the process of, of the Kickstarter um, <clears throat> how to really get the word out there to our first movers, you know, the sort of first uh, mm. customers. But then after that, it became a process of learning how to get into retail. And that was a huge and exciting next step for us. So tell us more about the marketing aspect of, of, uh, of your company. Uh, what, what did you have to learn? What, what did you have to do to market this great idea? Thanks for asking. That's a great question. You know, it was a huge learning process. So I obviously reached out to entrepreneurs early on for help with that too. And I also read a lot of blogs. So I'm sure a lot of people in the board game community are familiar with Jamie Stegmeier of Stonemeyer Games. Uh, for example, Scott Scythe and the current one, of course, Wingspan, the big hit. Well, he writes extensive blog posts, including how to do a Kickstarter. So I read a lot of his posts, and I also watched a ton of YouTube videos on this, on how to run a Kickstarter, for instance, and then learn the next level of marketing. So one piece I didn't know was that I just basically needed to join all the board game Facebook groups I could find and be really active on them. We didn't really do that soon enough before the Kickstarter to have a really good sense of the community, but since then I'm active almost daily on a lot of the Facebook groups and I definitely highly recommend for any, you know, aspiring game designers or entrepreneurs out there to check out Game Industry is a really good one. And also Tabletop Game Kickstarter advice if you're thinking to launch your own Kickstarter. Mm. <clears throat> and there's a few others as well, so people can feel free to reach out to me about those. So that was a big part, just becoming really active on Board Game Facebook. And honestly, we never dove deep into a lot of other platforms, although I've gotten really into Instagram lately. And, um, you know, our penguin is a big part of my marketing. In fact, I usually travel with our penguin. His name is Angus V. Stout, named for Angus MacGyver, <laughs> since MacGyver was all about getting out of crazy situations using funny resources. And V. Stout is from Vesta Stout, who invented duct tape. Hmm. So Angus travels me a lot. He does funny things like visit the zoo and see the penguins and gets his own seat on Southwest usually. So he's been a big part of, you know, current marketing in terms of just being out there on Instagram and seeing, showcasing his adventures as a, you know, daring, courageous, adventurous penguin. In terms of just uh, other details around marketing, I mean, a lot of folks will know this, but we go to conventions, right? We only tend to go to the bigger ones now just because you have, you know, such small sales at, at a smaller convention. It doesn't make sense to travel for many of those. But, you know... Being out there at conventions is huge to actually talk one-on-one -on -one and demo the game with gamers, right? That seems obvious. What was less obvious to me in the beginning is that the best convention by far for us to go to and really spread the word and get to know people in the industry was the Gamma Trade Show. Mm -hmm. So for folks who aren't familiar with this, that's the Game Manufacturers Association. Game Manufacturers Association, or Gamma, is so important as an entrepreneur, I really cannot emphasize it enough that in this industry, you need to show up there. You've got to meet your retailers and you get to meet manufacturers. You get, you get to meet distributors, you know, all those good people in the industry who will be part of that process of, of going from start to finish. Uh, basically, you know, from the, the factory floor to the distributor to the store and, and all the other steps in between. So that was a really important point for us last March, in fact, March of 2018, where we really took off in a, in a big way initially. So one of the things that drew me to this game is the art. Oh, thank you. How, yeah. how did you decide what goes <laughs> on the cover of it, uh, the style of the cards? What, how did that, tell me about that process. Sure, I really appreciate that because we care a lot about our designer and she does a great job. We work with her really closely on all of the artwork. Her name is Yulia Kim and she and my co-founder, John Cannon, and I all came up with the artwork together. So at first, because, you know, there's all these crazy resources in the game, right? Snobby orangutan and a, a map of the world in 1489. We thought we might just show the resources sort of spilling out of a knapsack, you know, like a, someone sack they're carrying while they're running away. Hmm. And then when we thought of the name Wing It, because the idea, of course, is that you're winging it, you're trying to get out of a situation using whatever resources you have, one of us, we still don't know who, but one of us came up with the idea of showing a penguin flying because penguins can't fly. Hmm. And that's the key to this artwork is that the penguin says, 
You think penguins can't fly? Watch me. Just give me a jetpack and I can definitely fly. And actually, he was a little too cute at first. So we, we made him a little slimmer. We gave him a mohawk and, you know, have the funny helmet with the goggles. And so we tried to make him, like, less cute. And, you know, he's obviously kind of got the superhero arms up. And so we just sort of developed him into this character soaring over a city that, you know, is a lot like New York City. Huge skyline. And uh, that's how we came up with the art. Just the idea of winging it made sense for a creature who can't usually fly. But if he's given the right resources, he absolutely can. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is wing it. And then this is the expansion to it. How that's does, right. How does this add to the game? Thanks for asking. So I love this expansion. And it, in some ways, it's even quirkier than the original. If, if you've played the original, you know it's pretty ridiculous and quirky and weird. So the expansion, Wing It Beyond, with our little penguin flying up into space with a, a towel. Some of you out there will know the towel reference. Take a moment. <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, right? He got it right away, I could tell. So this features our penguin going up into space because the themes of Wing It Beyond are space, travel, apocalypse. These are the top three themes voted on by our original Kickstarter backers. That's why we have three. And also because I think it makes it a little more interesting. And this expansion, not only a standalone, but also includes a third deck. That third deck has surprise cards. They're disguised as resource cards. So they look like resources on the back with that big red, uh, big red flashy look to it. But they are actually surprise cards, and what that means is that you surprise all your fellow players with a new way to play that round. There's a dozen of these different ways to play. One of my personal favorites is the Steve card. So this was invented by our Kickstarter backer, Brendan Kelly, who's now a friend of mine. And Brendan actually was one of our original backers and also demoed Wing It when it was not even out yet. The Steve card says, Steve is your neighbor. He's pretty clueless about everything going on, and overall a pretty boring guy. Each player must mention Steve in their story. <laughs> yeah, this always this always gets a smile or a laugh from the you know retailers and other folks. And basically, you know, there's just 12 new ways to play on on 20 set of 24 cards in here. So that's the expansion. Super excited about it. It actually just arrived in early March, but went into distribution on May 10th. So it's now getting into more and more stores. Oh, wow. okay. I'm seeing a few retailers feature it on Instagram and, and uh, feature it on Instagram and Facebook. And, you know, that's been awesome. So we're really excited about it. And that was our, our second product. People don't, again, people don't need to own the original to have the expansion. So if you like the idea of winning it, but you specifically like the themes of space and apocalypse, or you're just really into travel and sci-fi this is this is the probably the better game for you than even the original well, tell us more about the retail side of things what is it like to work with retailers oh my gosh retailers are incredible that is a really amazing part of my business so you know look people think about sales and you think about cold calling and just ringing a store out of the blue that is really hard calling up stores even to offer them a demo is still hard for me i still get nervous when i follow up with a lot of those stores but the reality is that our retailers are unbelievably supportive. It has been absolutely incredible to get to know so many people who are retail store owners and managers and staff who are supportive, interesting, fun, and just really, really encouraging of, of, our, of us and our business. I, I can't speak highly enough how, how supportive I feel. And honestly, I think I mentioned this earlier, but I'm on Facebook chat almost daily sometimes nightly with different retailers who I'm friends with. They give us tons of advice. And in terms of actually breaking into stores, <clears throat> you know, I wanted to mention, especially for game designers or entrepreneurs out there, that other than physically walking into a store or calling one up, really the best way to meet a lot of retailers at one time is to go to Gamma, meaning the Gamma trade show. So if you can get to that, definitely try to go. That's where I had that story happen at the bar and we grew from... 11 to 60 stores in four weeks. And, you know, a lot of our growth came from Gamma retailers spreading the word about Wing It. And uh, that was just super exciting for us. I would say now that we're in closer to maybe the 150 to 200 store range, you know, I'm also counting Australian stores, ca Canadian stores, we have some in the UK at least, that a lot of those I'm sure are coming through distribution as well. And so then, you know, even in the US, we don't know all the stores that are getting Wing It or the Wing It expansion through distributors. So you lose some of that personal touch, 
But a lot of the folks that do pick it up through distribution are people I meet on the road. You know, I mentioned traveling a lot, and that's a huge part of my business, getting on the road, going out to different cities, one city at a time, and hitting up, you know, all or almost all of the game stores in all those cities. In fact, last year I spent three and a half on the three and a half in fact last year I spent three and a half weeks on the West Coast and ended up in LA, San Diego, Seattle, and mm. San Francisco just to wow. hit the game stores out there. Mm. So that's a really key part of our business is going in person, giving them a brief demo of the game, you know, literally just showing them how to play, because we often don't have time to play actually at the store. And then I leave them with their copy and you know, I call back, you know, in a few days or a few weeks and some of them will order on the spot, but usually I'll follow up for a few weeks or even several months. That's pretty frequent. And you just have to really be, you know, gung ho and not be afraid to continue following up and, you know, recognize that you're bringing them something, you know, hopefully valuable to their business that they'll be able to pass on to a whole lot of folks who just want to have a great time with their friends and family playing a fun party game, right? Mm. So don't feel like you're being a burden ever for retailers. You know, they have a lot to do, but at the end of the day, you know, that's the best way to meet people is to, to be there in person, whether that's at a convention or whether that's, you know, actually visiting their stores in all these cities. For anyone that's watching this that's hoping to put out their own game in mm -hmm. the future, is there any advice you would like to give them? I love that idea. I love that question because I have gotten so much free mentorship and now I also mentor new game designers and entrepreneurs for free. Um, that's a big part of my mission is to make sure people feel comfortable self-publishing. I would say in terms of being an entrepreneur, I would say as much as you can, feel really well prepared with your research first. That was something I dove into really deep, but dove into it kind of late, especially in terms of learning how to build a market and build interests and build an email list pre-Kickstarter, for example. If you're in an industry that uses Kickstarter, make sure you read up on how people did that successfully. So for example, if you're a game designer or if you are, you know, launching a book on Kickstarter, you know, look into what the most successful people did three months out or six months out or nine months out. Fortunately, in the game industry, there's a lot of blogs on this. You know, I mentioned the Stonemeyer game is blog, but there's also Jamie Matthews blogs, for instance, and a lot of people have found those super helpful. Um, I also want to mention that it is invaluable to interview people in your industry. So make sure you find those great mentors out there who are willing to talk, willing to give you an hour or a couple hours for free now and then. You know, obviously make sure you don't reach out to them too often, but don't be afraid to ask the tough questions and ask how they did things really early on. So in addition to finding mentors really early on, just to give you advice on how they started out and you know how they did their Kickstarter or got funding in other ways or how they landed their first customer, I also really heavily advise people to just constantly be networking and building your brand and get out there in public spaces, whether that means online forums like Facebook and Reddit and so on. And also, frankly, I mean, and Instagram and, and Twitter, but I also frankly recommend that you, you know, show up at places where there are people in your industry, not just on the exhibit hall floor, but do what I did. Go to the bars, you know, go out to restaurants with people if you can, because ultimately it's a lot easier to, you know, work with people as far as becoming partners with them on a retail level. You know, it's easier to sell when people are also your friends and you also know them personally. Hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's just going to be easier for you and it's more fun too. And it's more, probably more fun for them as well. On, on that note, I would say in addition to constantly networking, um, don't be afraid to put yourself in situations that are really hard. So when I first walked in that bar at Gamma, that wasn't easy. I didn't know almost anyone in the bar, but just walking up to strangers and being friendly and getting to know them as people is really important. And that'll, that'll help you grow as a person but it'll also help you grow your business because they're constant sources of advice for me. My retail friends are amazing sources of advice. And I really appreciate that I can write some of them at 10 o'clock at night and say, hey, has this game been put out yet in the world? Does this game exist yet? Can you help me out with that? So don't be afraid of that. And if you do a CPG, a consumer package good, like a game or an another physical invention, I can't advise you enough to not be afraid to just walk into a store. Our first 11 or 12 stores were because we walked in and I still use that strategy. I still am constantly going to new cities and going into stores. I traveled to over 15, probably 20 stores, you know, in the last year plus a month or so that we were since the Kickstarter traveled in a little over a year to about 20 different cities. That's super important to, to 
just walk into stores in those cities and really spread what you love and spread what you care about. And lastly, I would just say, you know, this kind of goes along with mentoring. Be sure you have a plan for how you're going to fund your business and your life when you have a low month of sales for when the money is, is really low or when it runs out. That's really, really hard. So whether that's finding angel investors, perhaps family and friends, or that's applying to accelerators. I'm actually applying to a, some women's accelerators now and researching those. Or even if you have a product like say a tech product, whether that's researching investment funds, you know, if your product is attracted to venture capitalists, don't be afraid to try to apply for, for you know, getting funds from a VC fund. And of course, at the end of the day, you've always got Kickstarter. That's a great place to launch products as well and really prove your market. Well, excellent. Well, uh, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Um, of course. Any, any last thoughts, comments, anything before we wrap up? I just want to put out there that, you know, for me, and I hope for a lot of listeners out there who are really excited to start your own business or try launching a product, that winging it is a lifestyle. Wing it isn't just a game. It's really the core of who we are, um, both as people, I would say, but also the core of who our company is. And I think that that's really what drives success for us is getting out there and just winging it. You know, we wouldn't be in as many places as we are now if we didn't really put ourselves out there and just jump in. I heard from a, a famous entrepreneur recently that it's a good idea to jump in, even with 70% of the information. So, you know, be like the penguin. Say, hey, you think I can't fly? Like, <laughs> find your version of a jetpack and get out there and, you know, make your dreams happen by just winging it and going for it. And don't be afraid to, to dive in. So where can uh, people find you online? Uh, what's your, where can people reach you on social media? Well, the first one is probably Facebook, since almost everyone is on Facebook at this point. It would be great for you to find our Facebook page for Flying Leap Games and just press like and you'll get the updates from us on there. You can also follow us on Instagram at Flying Leap Games and you'll see a lot of our penguins adventures. So we have an actual penguin who goes on adventures all over the place. He travels me all the time and you can learn about what he's up to on Instagram as well as what Flying Leap Games is doing. Thirdly, you can follow us on Twitter and our handle there is at Penguin Soaring. So just remember at Penguin Soaring since he is in fact soaring. And lastly, if anyone has specific questions, they can reach us by email. That's flyingleapgames at gmail.com. And if you have a question or concern or if you want to be more involved in our company, definitely reach out to us, flyingleapgames at gmail.com. And we would love to be in touch. We love talking with people who are playing wing it. We love talking with other game designers, retailers, anyone. So definitely reach out to us. Excellent. Well, again, thank you very much. Definitely. This is Molly Zeff. The game is called Wing It. Wing It and Wing It Beyond. And you can actually find either of these at flyingleapgames.com. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And um, uh, comment below if you have any other questions. I'll be happy to forward it to, to Molly. If that you would have be great. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe. You know the drill. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time.